This is Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, the voice of hope. Ghana, voice of hope. Today's Daylight Magazine has segments designed with you in mind. Stay tuned and be blessed. We share each other's lives. There is nothing as sweet as fellowship as we share each other's lives. We We give our hearts to each other. You can feel his love inside. We we give our hearts to each other. You can feel his love inside. For there's nothing as sweet as fellowship. As we share each other's heart, oh, there is nothing as sweet as fellowship. As we share each other's heart, ah, 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 For our reflections, we shall look at Exodus 20, verses 1 to 11. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son, or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. You just listened to the audio version of Exodus 20 verses 1 to 11. What do you choose? Eternal damnation in hellfire or eternal life in a golden city? Hell was not made for any man but the devil. Dear listener, don't allow him to deceive you to sin 
to join him in hell. Accept Jesus Christ today as your personal Savior. Get baptized into a true Bible-believing church. And live daily for the Lord with the help of the Holy Spirit. Your eternal life will be guaranteed. God bless you. Listener, the program is healthy. You today we are going to discuss alcohol and pregnancy, consequences of drinking alcohol while you're pregnant, the treatments, prevention of alcohol related birth defects. So, they have here with me Mr. Thomas Say. Thomas, you're welcome. Thank you. I recently read a sign at a bus stop warning women against drinking alcohol whilst pregnant. Because alcohol can cause bad defects in your baby, many women are not aware of alcohol's dangers during pregnancy. So we would like to talk today about its effect on a baby's development. My name is Sharon Mensadoku. Thomas, please, what do you think about women drinking whilst they are pregnant? And not any drink, but alcohol. Well, research has shown that an unborn baby has very little tolerance for alcohol. Mm -hmm. Alcohol interferes with their ability to get enough oxygen to nourish their developing tissues and organs, including their brain. It is clear that if you are pregnant and take an alcoholic drink, your unborn baby takes the same drink. So if mother drinks alcohol while pregnant, baby can indeed be born with serious physical and mental defects. When a baby is born, how would you know? That or what are some of the symptoms of a baby damaged by alcohol? Um, the most severe outcome is that baby is born with what is called fetal alcohol syndrome, a condition characterized by poor growth both before and after birth, bony deformities such as dislocated hips and a curved spine, heart defects, abnormal facial features and a small head with a damaged brain. The brain damage may result in mental retardation, learning problems, short attention span, and hyperactivity. Mm -hmm. These alcohol-related defects are permanent, and they can cause a lifetime of physical and emotional pain. Mm, okay. How much alcohol can a mother <laughs> drink whilst she's pregnant? When a mother drinks alcohol, it quickly travels through her bloodstream to her womb. Mm -hmm. So when it enters her baby's bloodstream, babies break down alcohol more slowly than an adult. Mm -hmm. So they end up with higher alcohol levels in their blood. No one knows how much harm is caused when a developing baby is exposed to occasional small amounts of alcohol before birth. So it is clear that the more you drink while pregnant, the greater the risk to your unborn baby. It is also clear that the most severe damage to baby occurs when you drink alcohol during the first three months of your pregnancy. That critical time during which key stages of baby's development are occurring. Unfortunately, many women are not even aware that they are pregnant during these early weeks of pregnancy. If I'm an expectant mother and I stop, are there any guarantees that my baby will be born without defects? Okay, the United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has studied the problem and concluded that exposure to alcohol by a developing baby 
is one of the main preventable causes of birth defects and developmental problems. While experts in that country have concluded that fetal alcohol syndrome is completely preventable if a woman doesn't drink alcohol during pregnancy. As a new mother, what can you do to prevent your baby from having such alcohol defects? Pregnant women and women who are trying to become pregnant Mm -hmm. should play it safe and avoid alcohol entirely. If you are pregnant and can't stop drinking, ask your doctor for assistance in finding substance abuse counseling or a treatment program to help you overcome your misuse of alcohol. Stop drinking by knowing that doctors haven't identified a level of alcohol that is safe for a pregnant woman to drink. That there is no cure for fetal alcohol syndrome and that the physical and mental defects your baby may suffer because of the alcohol can last a lifetime. If a baby is born with fetal alcoholic syndrome, can this baby be cured? Well, as far as I know, there is no specific treatment. But a child with fetal alcohol syndrome will risk behavioral problems later in life. So problems such as drug abuse, dropping out of school and encounters with the juvenile justice system. Providing a stable, nurturing home is the single most important thing you can do to help your child deal with these behavioral problems. You may also find the following suggestions helpful. Teach your child the skills necessary for daily living and follow daily routines to which your child can become accustomed. Create and enforce simple rules and limits. Point out and use rewards to reinforce acceptable behavior. Because many children with fetal alcohol syndrome have mental defects, guard against their being taken advantage of by others. And also ask your doctor for help to identify the support services that are available in your area. For your child's specific alcohol-related physical problems, you must seek medical advice. Dear listener, we have heard it all. It is easier to prevent fetal alcohol syndrome than to treat it. Go over these preventive measures one more time. Thomas, please. Okay. First, don't drink alcohol if you are trying to get pregnant. Okay. Because your baby's brain, heart and blood vessels begin to develop in the early weeks of pregnancy. So before you even know you are pregnant, if you don't drink alcohol, stop the moment you even think you might be pregnant. The sooner you stop, the safer it is for your baby. Next, continue to avoid alcohol throughout your pregnancy. Fetal alcohol syndrome is completely preventable in babies whose mothers don't drink during pregnancy. Next, consider giving up alcohol during your childbearing years if you are sexually active and having unprotected sex, as many pregnancies are unplanned. Finally, if you have an alcohol problem, get help to stop drinking before you get pregnant. God blessed women with a beautiful mechanism by which they can bring new life into the world. A mother can create a perfect baby if she takes precautions to safeguard her baby's development. It may take considerable efforts on your part, but don't bring to life a baby who will be damaged because of habits that you failed to control. Thank you very much, Thomas. We all now know what to do. Don't drink whilst you're pregnant. If you're not drinking whilst you're pregnant, then why start? Thank you very much. Alcohol and Pregnancy was written by Dr. Richard Yakom, a medical doctor working in the United States. The medical views expressed in this program are his and may differ for your particular health needs. If you need medical advice, please, like I always say, seek a doctor's advice in your area. Thank you very much for listening. This has been Healthy You with me here, Mr. Thomas Say. And my name is Sharon Mensadeku. Thank you very much. For any inquiries or contribution, you can contact us on plus two three three. 
0244-237-3528 or 0244-235017 or email us at radio at vvu.edu.gh or through the postal address Adventist World Radio Ghana P.O. Box AF 595 Adenta Greater Accra Region Ghana You are welcome to Moment of Truth. I am Osu Jan Eric from the School of Theology and Mission Valley University. Please, before we open our Bible and then listen to the Word of God, I urge you to close your eyes wherever you are so we pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you once again for such divine opportunity, even as sinful as we are, to still have the opportunity to hear your Word and get the opportunity to turn from our evil ways and live. We are grateful unto you. We believe you're going to be with us even as we hear your word. We thank you so much for an answered prayer. For we have prayed in the mighty name of Jesus with thanksgiving. Amen. Please, I'd like you to quickly open your Bible to Mark chapter 4, verse 30 to 32. Mark chapter 4, verse 30 to 32. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all hers, and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. This is the word of God. We live in a global community. With the use of the internet and uh, cellular devices, we are always a few minutes away from discovering breaking news and latest trends. We even have a new vocabulary for this age of 24 hour communication with our virtual communities and followers. Tweeting, goggling, Facebooking, etc., etc., have become a part of our daily conversation in a fast paced, world where our needs are met in moments. It isn't any wonder that we may lose sight of God's intention for this planet we call home. Is it any wonder that although we appear to be always connected, we may actually be more alone than we realize? It is not usual to see people gathered together for dinner or an outing and almost everyone is on a mobile device connecting with someone while ignoring those who are right in front of them. Gone are the days when you could be expected to know all the people who lived on your street. Yet we can claim friendship with people who live all over the world who we may never meet face to face. Jesus' method was just to go to the individual, 
meet, sit with him or her, ask and know the problem, and then Jesus helped that individual to overcome that problem, and he bids the person, follow me. Pastors of today hardly go for visitation. We hardly actually come together as it was in the days of old. We hardly see a pastor in the 21st century moving from one house to the other, inquiring of the basic needs of the church member. All we do is just to sit in our homes and use mobile phones and internet, and still thinking we are connected. This physical disconnect has affected all layers of society, no matter where we live in the world. And it most definitely has affected our church community. Community is defined by the Merriman Webster Online Dictionary as a group of people who live in the same area, such as a city, town, or neighborhood. Brothers and sisters, because of how the world has grown, because of how knowledge has increased, that unity that used to be, that used to exist among believers is nowhere to be found. Group of people who have the same interests, religion, race, etc., or a group of nations. Today, many neglect gathering for worship, preferring to watch online, while others do not make a permanent rules with a church because they like the flexibility of being with their friends. It has occurred to me as I have watched this phenomenon over the past several years that many of us fail to recognize that this way of living is not reflecting of what Scripture tells us about community. A passage of Scripture that highlights our need to recalibrate and rethink our understanding of this community is found in Mark chapter 4, verse 30 to 32, as I read initially. Then he said, To what shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what parable shall we picture it? It is like a master seed, which when it is sown on the ground, is smaller than all the seeds on earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all herbs, and shoots out large branches, so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. The multitudes that followed the Messiah were unsure of what the kingdom of God was, and he often used stories and parables to explain what he meant. Their confusion was understandable because as a people who were the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they were challenged by the occupation and oppression of the Romans and hoped for salvation from the promised Messiah. These masses had heard and responded to the preaching of John the Baptist. They were aware of the miracle at Jesus' baptism. Every demon cast out person healed, or miraculous feeding of thousands awakened within them the hope that perhaps this indeed was the promised one. When Jesus declared that the kingdom of God was here, many hoped that this was indeed the warrior king who would deliver them and re-establish Israel as kingdom. There was an expectation of what their community would become. What are your expectations of Jesus? Are they founded on what he has done in your life or just what you wanted to do? Brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers out there listening to us, all that I want to say it is so essential that we continue to live together. We can't exclude ourselves from community. We can't exclude ourselves from the church. The most important aspect of this whole thing is that when you find yourself among believers and even if you fall spiritually, There is always somebody who helps you to come back. There is always somebody who helps you spiritually to come back from your shortcomings. And so it's not the best thing to do to exclude yourself. It is not the best thing to do to stay in your hall every Saturday or Sunday watching sermons online. Jesus did not do that. The Bible doesn't teach that. Why haven't we been preaching or teaching about this before? Especially since this was Jesus' message has traveled for three years through the dusty towns of Galilee. Jesus' first message after his Jordan baptism was, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17 to 18. And you can also find this in Mark chapter 1, verse chapter 5, 1, verse 15. 
This declaration revealed that there was a new community, society, and way of life, which was being firmly established by Jesus. This new community would thrive with Jesus as his head, his chief, his leader, and his king. Brothers and sisters, we have one leader, we have one king, we have one chief, and he is Jesus Christ. He is the one we are all following. And therefore, if you exclude yourself from church services, if you stay back almost all the time, not seeing the importance of going to church, then I want to believe there is something wrong somewhere. Therefore, I'm urging you that do your best to go to church. Do your best to fellowship with the believers. Mingle yourselves with the believers. When you read the book of Acts, you see that in the days of old, the believers, they actually broke bread together. They came together to worship. They did almost everything together. And that is why they could withstand those present times. So if you and I can stand for Christ, then we need to come together, urge ourselves, encourage ourselves. I thank you so much, believing that you have understood and God is going to help you to overcome this. I pray that the Lord bless and keep you in the name of Jesus. Thank you very much for staying with us. Once again, you can reach us on plus 233-244-673528 or 244 or email us at radio at vvu.edu.gh or through the postal address Adventist World Radio Ghana PO Box AF595. Adenta Greater Accra Region. I believe today's magazine has been a blessing. May the good Lord's hand be in your life. Amen. Remember to tune in same time tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>